All right, it says recording. Yeah, great. Well, welcome everybody. I'm Chris. And I'm Kim. <laughs> and we uh, run Wolf Camp and School of Natural Science. We're down here at our house, Blue Sky Farm in Puyallup. We do most of our programs at Lake Sammamish. Welcome to the parent camp, uh, camp fair. And we are, our session is fi tight 15 minutes, exactly. So whatever I get done in 15 minutes, I'm all you're gonna get. And we have a uh, first person jumping in. Welcome. And I know there's a million different sessions going on. So we're just going to do it as if there are a lot of people here because we are also gonna upload this recording to the parent map site, uh, camp fair site, so that people can watch the fire making uh whenever they want to later and so the title is wilderness survival and safe fire making i believe and uh fire by friction. yeah fire by friction thank fire. you wilderness survivor and fire by friction now in um we mentioned in the wilderness survival side the only thing i want to mention before we start the fire is the 10 essentials which is a term coined by the mountaineers um uh, in 100 years ago almost uh, or probably not that long but anyways when everybody started really going on things that you need to think about before you go out there, 10 categories really, uh, because they bring less when you only think you're going to go out for an hour, more when you think you're going to go for a day hike, and of course when you're going to go for a long overnight, it's going to be a lot of stuff. So um, those categories include, you know, something to, that you know how to make fire with already, because man, when you get out there in those situations, it's a lot more challenging than you think. We don't, when you don't have pre-dried stuff in your, uh, in your uh, uh, garage, you know, garage that, that you kept dry all winter long. Um, there are a few things. Now, the first step to so look up the 10 essentials, you can just go do that yourself. We also have it on our website, an extensive blog um, lists all sorts of categories of outdoor learning that are on there if you want to look at wolfcollege.com. And um, the uh, first thing you want to do when you make a fire, no matter where you are, is to um, Pretty sure they can see us and not the people that are here in Latino. I don't know whether that I changes or not. I'm assuming that it's just going to be us that show up mostly when the recording is done, but that's okay. Hopefully, those that are joining us here today are ready. We'll enjoy this anyway. We love doing it. First thing you want to do is even on snow, you can do a fire. This is going to be called, we call it, I call it the blanket fire making uh, design. And so, what you want to do first thing is to take anything off the ground basically what i do is i scrape with my foot all the debris that's on the ground in the entire area that's also keeps it safer in the summer but in the winter or when you're on snow we can grab anything you have to have something down just even the worst stuff you can find this i just scraped up off the ground right here it came with some sticks so that's okay it doesn't matter whatever it is because you have to insulate from the thing that's going to make you coldest when you're out there in the wilderness and uh well and the fire coldest, which is gonna be the ground, in addition to the wind, of course. Yeah. But anyways, okay, so any of the stuff I can do to get a layer between my fire, or if I'm making a survival shelter between the ground and myself, and you wanna get it out of the wind as best you can. So same thing, if you're in a survival situation, get behind you know, uh, a tree. Um, and at nighttime, air flows downhill because cold air sinks. And so it might be opposite during the day. You're thinking, oh, I need a survival shelter. And um, the wind's kind of blowing, or should I say just a little barely breeze going uphill? Well, it's going to shift and go downhill most likely, depending on whether there's any wind storm coming in. That's going to be a different story. But if it's just a calm night, wind, air is flowing downhill. So be on the downhill side of a tree, but nowhere down near water, because that's where the cold air is going and is going to sit. So be about halfway up the hill, if you can, or up to some away from water away a little bit obviously which is going to be up the slope even if you can't tell that it's going up go away from the water it'll be a little quite a bit warmer sometimes five degrees warmer than down near the water it's a dangerous place down there anyway same thing with fire you want to be um a, have a little bit of wind protection get a bunch of debris it can even be wet just get it up away so that there's some air pockets sort of trapped between the um, ground and the fire that you're going to make because air insulate just like the thing between your two window panes it's not the glass that insulates it's the air between the glass that's really insulating and so same thing here okay the next layer of thing that you want is a you've got your bed now you need a pillow and so any kind of rocks and sticks and oh i could even yeah just use these rocks as a pillow so i'm going to put a square pillow here 
and you got to get it kind of up um, high enough because when your your blanket is built, um, that there's a little nice just to have a nice big log or something. Yeah, you can just get logs out of the woods, drag it over there, and yeah, makes a great pillow. And uh, high fire. enough so that when you put your blanket on, if there's a little bit of lift between your bed. Uh, above your bed, but below your blanket, so that you can get your tinder and such in there to start your fire. Whoa, Blackberry! Oh, <laughs> okay, so I hit it again without my gloves. Uh, okay, so now you need a pillow, or excuse me, a blanket. And of course, the easiest thing would be nice long grass, which in our area, reed canary grass is very invasive, but it's awesome for fire, big long stalks. The best thing in here are the leaves. Now this is a little green, but I know it's dry because it's been in the garage all summer. You want to get the tall um, reed canary grasses uh, after a, a, probably a, a half hour after sunrise or a half hour after it rains. This stuff's dry already because it's standing straight up in the air and there's always a little wind going through and it dries right out. So this is an example or uh, cedar bark or tiny little hemlock branches. Not cedar branches though, because they don't really take a flame and go unless it's already going. So, so, you, so one thing about the blanket though, you're gonna wanna make sure that the material that's in the blanket is gonna be the finest material that you have. So the thinnest, driest, littlest pieces. So some people like to talk about um, calling it pencil lead. So the size of the lead of a pencil is gonna go down first because you want your finest stuff at the bottom, your best stuff, so that when you put that flame underneath, it will actually catch fire and continue up layer by layer. By the way, and this is going to be my pencil lead, or excuse me, pencil side, that's pencil lead side. And this was not in the, in the garage. This is actually just piled up around back here. And again, because it's lofted away up off the ground, it dries fast. And so this is the next layer. And I want to really put, now to be safe, you have to, uh, and you want to keep it as long as you can. Don't waste your time breaking stuff, but this won't fit in there safely. So I'm going to break it once. Um, and the more you have on top of here, the, the concept that really people all miss in making fire is that just like you, a fire needs shelter because if, it, if you just let it flame up, all the heat goes away. You need to trap the heat in. There's air that is gonna come through. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna open up a little air vent right here. So the air can flow down in there. It's gonna have plenty of air but you have to trap the heat in so that it reflects the heat back down in. It stays warm because if you let it lose um, heat, uh, it's gonna go out. And so that's why like, if you are having a um, fire and it goes down to coals, all you have to do is cover those coals up with the, uh, and usually it starts warming up and warming up and warming up if you cover it. Uh, in about 10 minutes, it'll spontaneously combust back into flame instead of just sitting there blowing on it forever. So it's pretty safe around here because it's really wet. Um, grass mm -hmm. is cut down, it's green, we have and we have our fire pit. You want to have a pit possible. Now, if you're on snow, you have to just do it right on top of the snow with your bed on there. But if you can get down into the ground, especially in the summer, you have to dig out in the forest, especially you have to dig out all the, about this much out of the ground and create a pit because that is actually just decom decomposing leaves and needles and stuff. It looks like soil, but it's not yet. And so I've seen fires come up 30 and 40 feet away from a fire that's being built right on top of the Pacific Northwest human sea soil in the Pacific Northwest. You have to dig that out and get down to the dirt. I mean, the sand usually, or the mud down there. And that's- Do you do extra math yet? That's we'll do extra, extra math. math. Or I'm gonna text them. You can show me it later. Do extra math, please. Uh, and it sucks air down in, so you never have to blow either. Okay, so now we're moving on to creating the baby. Now that we have a bed, pillow, blanket, um, also, Kimmer, could you grab some any sort of stuff to put over the top of this to show that if you shelter it with a bunch more big material on top of there, we will uh, be able to get a fire going. If you don't, it's going to cool down so quick that it might go out. All right, so this is my favorite thing to carry with me if you're prepared for fire is jute string. You can get that in any hardware store or, you know, Fred Meyer or big box store. And um, it, jute string is a natural plant fiber jute uh, that they make burlap sacks out of stuff. This one has three strands 
and you just pull those apart. And each of those strands, if you unspin those, it oh, right. <laughs> it um, comes into its, its fibrous, normal fibers. So get and that away from the computer. Then what you do there. is you take all these little fibers like this and you, you put them all together and you make a big fluffy ball. And so this is gonna be one of your best fire tenders. And it's great because when you carry it, you're also carrying rope, which could be one of your 10 essentials. Um, and then you also have fire. So um, if it doesn't look like a hair ball from a dog or a cat, um, it still looks too much like rope. You need to fluff it up even more. Yeah, and the, so that's something that flames up really quickly. If you, even if you have just one little um, flame on there, then you want something that'll catch a coal or a spark and keep going. Cotton, of course, is the best there is for that because it's the tiniest little fibers you can possibly have. Um, so much surface area. That's the concept of why cotton is so great. Now, if you just have cotton, it doesn't go up into a flame uh, very well because that's called, this cotton is really coal extender. So you wanna have something with it like jute. Um, so we're gonna demonstrate first thing uh, with fire steel. And then if we have time, um, I'm going to try to do it with bow drill fire by friction. And so here comes two fire by friction methods. Um, do you methods. wanna use this with this? Let's just use a cotton ball. Uh, okay, just cotton ball only. Yeah. And be, with a fire steel, you can get this cotton going and you don't want to have a lot of people want to put Vaseline on there and that's okay but then you'll have to pull it up and make it really stringy and it's a little you harder for it to catch the spark. Cotton for it to catch yeah. the spark. Do you want to do it right on here right in front of uh, the thing? Sure. That's great and then we'll bring it over there. Can you hold it down so that the wind doesn't blow it you out? You want to bring it over there? Oh I can uh, yeah, kind we'll of it, hold it down. Maybe put it right into the fire. Okay so this you just hold it at an angle and you actually hold your um, yeah. fire steel uh, onto the cotton so hold it down and have it right close people try to do it out here and the spark will not get down there you have to be right there next to it so it's really hot right off the tip of the rod but once it leaves that rod the little cool space right fast. there it cools down yeah. way too fast so at a 45 degree angle this way or this way make it sharp and uh so we'll see yep it's yep, going it's so going. there's not a Check lot of flame out. but what you want to do is take this and go ahead and put it right into your um underneath your right there uh oh yeah we don't okay, want to start it out yet because i want to see if i can do it with um uh bow drill okay here goes uh oh and we only have like two minutes that's okay all right <laughs> all right do you want uh, me to talk while you're getting it ready oh can you talk yeah. i have something to, to add to that okay so one of the things that's really important is people get super psyched about um building you know doing a fire when they got in a survival situation but remember that's not the first thing that you need the most important thing that you can do when you get lost in the woods you're trapped in some sort of survival situation is to take a breath you've got to be able to think so everybody says don't panic but they don't tell you what to do well, we're telling you what to do you take a deep breath get some oxygen going and flowing um, and that way you can look around and assess the scene and make some decisions um, based on wisdom not panic so once you've taken your breath, you're going to want to work on shelter because that is the thing that's gonna keep you safe overnight. Everybody thinks, oh, fire will keep me warm, but fire is very problematic and very challenging to do. So you work on shelter. After that, you can work on fire if you wanna to add to it because it's gonna help you with the next thing, which would be water purification or water that's safe well, to drink. Well, because we're almost out of time oh, though, could you yeah. grab a um, some more tinder? I'm gonna use this to catch the coal. Great. And um, cedar bark is amazing, probably the best besides grass. Um, in addition to the grass leaves that are super dry, uh, in the Pacific Northwest, about the best tinder that you can get naturally. Um, so I'm going to just give it a try here. I'm not hardly going to explain anything I'm going to do. Just go to wolfcollege.com, go to the blog, click on wilderness survival skills, and go, or just search fire by friction or bow drill fire, and you'll see demonstrations and all the pitfalls that you have to learn about and that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm we have gonna... a YouTube channel with that stuff on there. I mean, it's all over the place. Yeah. So now there are some not very good YouTube videos out there. So That's go ahead true. and go to our site. So we link into some ones we really like, and yeah. we also did one or two ourselves. Yep. So all it right. is. I'm going to just hit demo it up. Okay. Oh, you have some cottonwood bark. Yeah, I do. So I'm going to make a tinder bundle. It's going to have that jute in the middle of it. I've got some cedar in there because um, right now jute is my fluffiest material, but you can make really fluffy material out of um, cedar bark if you know how to do it. And that's something that will take longer than this, this uh, talk that I'm we're giving. I'm um, Douglas fir needles on the top of 
my handhold so I don't have friction up there. You only have friction down at the bottom. Um, can you move some of this stuff so you can see? Um, and I'm just gonna go for it. That smoke coming up. So you can see that there's smoke. So he has to keep it up hot enough that that, so what's happening is as he drills, there's a little notch in the baseboard. And as he drills, the material becomes dust down in the baseboard notch. And as it builds up and he goes faster and faster. That was it. It had to get up to 712 degrees or so uh, in order to spontaneously combust into a coal. That's the dust that got really hot right there. Yeah. And so now beautiful. we have to put it into our I to put the cotton wood nest. Here. Okay, that underneath. You wanna really fluff all this uh, tinder up, but however, this jute, that we talked about earlier that's on top of there is the most amazing for turning into a flame. Okay, so, here it goes. It's a tiny little coal because I was only little... drilling for like five seconds. Oops, too high. There you go. So what he's doing is he's using oxygen to give that coal what it needs so that it can actually burst into flame. There it goes. There it goes. And now he's gonna put it underneath the blanket on the bed pillow blanket. Keep the blanket, everything covered, covered. with as much. Uh, yeah, so what it does. Reflecting heat down in there. Right, so it has gone up into the grass layer, gone up, which is the pencil lead. It's gone up into the pencil layer, going up into the marker layer. And we're just throwing some boards over the top. Think of that as your big comforter that you would put on top to help hold all of your heat in. Um, and it's really, really easy to make the bed, pillow, and blanket method. And so that's why we'd love to teach it here um, in our area. Ooh, well, that's going to be our tight 15 to 20, I Ooh. think it turned out to be. Does anybody oh, yeah. have, that's on have any questions? Um, hi, I have, I have one question. I think my, my son that is six year old, he would love this camp. Um, so I'm just wondering, do, so for this summer, do you take six year olds in your camp? Uh, we're only this year. Um, because we have really limited offerings, it's just re, uh, uh, limiting to eight and up for our actual day camps. But we do have one week of family workshops that occurs July 12th to the 16th down here in Puyallup. That's Monday through Friday. So somebody would have to take off, you know, a day of work to come down. And I believe the fire day, uh, if you want to bring your six-year-old, you have to pay for both people because it is an adult and family workshop and we can only take a certain number of people. But um, And so that's at wolfcollege.com and then just click on workshops and uh i believe that is wednesday or 30s yeah as far as six year old next year we'll be back to our eight normal um six to twelve year old age range for day camps okay thank you so much thank you're you. welcome thank, thank you. you bye now bye